Cliff. That was a long-winded answer. Cliff, over here. Give, just to follow up on what you were ju then just saying, is there any way to make this team the team that you envision other than tearing it down, bl blowing it up is the phrase you hear a lot in Toronto, and starting all over again with a series of high draft picks over a few years? Is there any other way to do it? Well, uh, you have to draft well to start with. Um, let's face it, you look at a team like New Jersey, at first round picks, they weren't early first round picks and uh, they picked up Parise and Zajac. Uh, I mean, and the lower round picks, you have to do a total job of good scouting and you have to get a little lucky too. But today, there's no doubt without that core of young players, it's gonna be a constant struggle. So. That has to be the prerequisite of starting to rebuild a team. Whether you have to tear a team down or just take away parts or, or whatever, you have to develop that core of young players. Cliff, many people believe that uh, in order to start this process, you'll have to uh, convince Mats maybe to waive his uh, no trade. Can you address that possible situation, please? No, I don't think I, uh, I, I choose to... Um, talk about it now other than to say that uh, Matt's been here since uh, 1994 and uh, he, he'll go down in history as one of the greatest Maple Leaf players ever. Uh, he's been a great leader, he's been a very durable player and I think the most important thing is to do what's right for Matt's. Richard, uh, just as you look at John's tenure, how do you think it will be remembered? Uh, history has a way of uh, writing itself over time. Um, I mean, he played f five years. Uh, um, he gave it a, a good shot, learned a lot. Uh, but in the end, uh, frankly, uh, the job wasn't done. We didn't realize our ambitions. But I, I really believe that, uh, and Cliff and I have talked about it, uh, John's 40 years old. He's, uh, if, if you look at people like Cliff, who's a little older than that, he's got 30 years of great career ahead of him. And, and this was his start. Uh, arguably one of the most difficult places to start, and I was kidding John this morning, I said whatever the next stop is will be a lot easier. Cliff, uh, just to follow up on your thoughts on, uh, on Matt's, you said the most important thing is to do what's right for Matt's. Isn't the most important thing to do what's right for the Toronto Maple Leafs first, ahead well, of Matt's? Uh, that's right, Damien, but uh, uh, Matt's is driving the engine here. He's an unrestricted free agent at the end of the year, and he has a no trade clause. Richard, from the standpoint of board involvement, what will change for the next general manager, if any, as opposed to John Ferguson's tenure? Do you know there's a, a myth out there that our general managers don't have autonomy. Uh, we do meet as a board. Our general managers communicate. We have discussion. On some, some subjects, a lot we don't. The general managers just inform the board of a free agent they've signed or a move that they've made and something really material to come in and and present the rationale to do that as, as any you know, good person does in a, in a senior management role. But in the end, in my 10 years here, the board has never turned down the request of a general manager in any of our sports. So in that sense, uh, Cliff in his interim will, will brief the board on his thoughts once he uh, gets a good handle on the team and on where he goes. Uh, and the new person will have a dialogue with, with our board, but the person will have autonomy. You, you call it a myth, and yet it seems clear to just about everyone that the operation of the basketball club and the operation of a hockey club were they're, not similar since Brian Colangelo came They're absolutely the same. You're not part of the board meetings where they have autonomy. They come in, make, make the, tell us what they're doing, and we've never turned one down. Richard, uh, should you have uh, figured this out last summer in terms of firing John or extend him instead of him coming into this year as a lame duck GM? You know, we said we'd be very meth meth uh, methodical about this. Um, we were close. Um, John believed he could do some things in the offseason. You know what the moves were. Um, and we wanted to give John every shot to do it. We also are not uh, big fans of the lame duck theory. Uh, we have jobs to do. Some of us have contracts, some don't. Uh, as Brian and Sam proved, um, many of you were two years ago were writing off Sam Mitchell, and he became coach of the year. So we were... We thought we'd give John the rope to do the, th the, the changes. We'd monitor him through the year. 
And now when we've fallen short, we're here today. Mr. Fletcher, uh, is this a sense of deja vu for you in that when you came here in 1991, uh, the team was uh, in, in serious trouble. It looks like today, credibility-wise and on-ice performance, the team is uh, not in exactly the best of shape. Uh, is it a sense of deja vu for you, and can it be fixed this time? Well, I know one thing, that the rules of putting a team together are much different today. But the hockey club that wears the Maple Leaf jerseys now is one hang of a lot better than that club that... Uh, went on the ice in October of 1991, believe me, an awful lot better. So we're, we're, we got a much better, much better start. But look, we all know why I'm here. I, I think my experience will bode well for what we're trying to accomplish, and that is eventually to bring in as good a hockey executive as there is out there. and to be, if you want to use the term, the Brian Colangelo of, uh, of hockey. And it's, hopefully I can set the table so that when the new, new person comes in, he'll be able to get off running the first day. Other than setting a budget and living within it for the board, why does a general manager or hockey president have to report any decisions to the board other than the financial part? And does that not diminish the... Uh, attractiveness of the job if that is the case uh, no you know there's so much talked about our board I can tell you there's numerous clubs in in all of the leagues we behave in the the owners overrule decisions constantly and they report to it and, and you ask those general managers and those people are weighing in making the decisions our board steps back this is this is a very large company these are very uh, sophisticated businessmen uh, they're also fans and it's reasonable to expect when they have millions of dollars in investment that the people that work for them uh, tell them where they're going and they want to know where their investment's going. John said this week, or maybe it was late last week, that he had a plan to retool things and that plan was dismissed by the board and now the team is where it is. So doesn't that... John's, John's, we did not evaluate John in the last three out of four wins. We did not evaluate him on the last couple days here. We evaluate him over the course of four and a half years, and that's why we made the decision not to pick up his, uh, or to ex 